Hello everyone, I'm your hostess with the mostest 8 second gaming and in today's video we are going to be talking about the best weapon combinations that you are going to be wanting to run for each different role. Having the right weapons for each different playstyle is very very important but don't worry I've got you covered. But just quickly if you're really looking to take your apex skill to the next level then you need to check out the Game Leap website right now. Season 17 brought in a bunch of changes for ranked and some people are struggling but don't worry because our top level coaches are cranking out guides constantly to help you out. We got legend guides, gun guides, VOD reviews, rank guides and a bunch of other stuff as well. So click the link in the description, pick yourself up a membership and start to improve today. But okay, with that out of the way, let's hop straight into things and what better place to start us all off with than the Entry Fragger. Now the Entry Fragger is the first one into the fight. They are doing a lot of up close and medium range fighting, so their weapons have to reflect that. And that is why for these guys, I'm recommending the R99 and the Wingman. Now the R99, despite getting a nerf at the start of Season 17, is still very strong. All they did is take one bullet from each magazine size, so the R99 is still very strong in its one clip potential. The damage damage is still there, the DPS is still there, the up close potential for your fighting is still there. And when the entry fragger is getting up close and personal into people's face, they need that one clip potential. If you can get up there and just immediately take somebody out of the fight, your team is now in a 3v2 and you're rolling in as a death ball and it's going to be so easy for you to actually win the fight. It's very crucial for the entry fragger to have that damage and that's why I'm putting the R99 here. But the other weapon that you have is the wingman. Now the medium range fights are a little bit tricky for some entry fraggers because they don't have the right weaponry for it. But the wingman thrives in medium range poke battles and also when you get up close it's a pistol it has the strafe speed of a pistol you can still be very good in those fights and if you're hitting headshot body shot body shot or something like that you are doing stupid amounts of damage in little amounts of time now, i will give you guys a little bit of a warning though the wingman is a very high risk high reward weapon so do practice with it before you actually take it at a rank because it is very unforgiving if you're missing shots you get into a fight with somebody and you miss the first two bullets it's more than likely you're going to lose the fight unless they're also potatoing play around with it in the range to get the timing of the shots down, take it into pubs, actually get into some fights with it, and then go into ranked and then you can actually start to climb. But that is our entry fragger covered, so let's move into the secondary fragger role. Now this role isn't as reliant on their up close fighting, they will have to do it because it's part of their job, but they also do end up in the medium range a lot more often, so both of their guns have to be good in both of those ranges. And that's why for these guys I'm recommending the car and the nemesis. Now some people might be wondering why am I recommending the car over the R9 when I just talked about how good the R9 is. Well that's because the car is also very strong but it's a lot more flexible. As a secondary fragger you do want to be funneling a few bits and pieces to your entry fragger rather than taking them for yourself. So if you find a purple light mag but also a purple heavy mag and you're also running an R9 you are losing out on a purple heavy mag but the car could take that and you can give the purple mag for the R9 to your entry fragger. Just gives you a little bit more flexibility but the car is also very strong. It can do a bunch of damage in the up close range it has a very fast fire rate, it has a ton of damage output potential, so when you do actually run up on somebody and you are actually in those close range fights, you still are having a ton of damage output and you're still helping your team a lot. But the second weapon we have for this combination is the Nemesis. Now this was a weapon that I was actually expecting Respawn to just completely gut going into Season 17 because of how strong it was in the previous season, but they didn't touch it at all. It is still absolutely disgusting with how much damage it does put out, and especially when it's fully revved up, you are just absolutely melting people. This provides a ton of really strong strong cover fire and in medium range battles you can absolutely shred somebody to give your team the opening to actually push up onto a team. It is the best assault rifle by far right now. Now the only thing you actually need to worry about with the nemesis is the burst part of it because it is a little bit weird for some people to use. Now you don't actually have to learn the timing on each trigger pull because you can just hold the trigger down and it's fully automatic that way but you will have to get a little bit used to the timing of the bursts when aiming and it is something that you will have to actually go into the range and practice around with a bit because it is a little bit weird for some people to get used to but the once you get used to it this gun absolutely shreds and it will do you wonders. But that's our secondary fragger done, so let's move into our last roll, and this is going to be the support. Now, the support is the backline, the anchor for the team. They're holding stuff down, and they're typically playing at further ranges until shit starts to pop off, and then they're actually going to be in the front line. They're actually going to need a bonk stick to hit somebody with. And that's why I recommend having a marksman rifle and a shotgun. Now for the marksman rifle, it's really just up to your personal preference on what you actually enjoy using and what's more consistent for you. The triple tank did receive some buffs and it's actually starting to feel good again. The 3030 feels amazing and the scout is also just such a fantastic weapon. All three of those can do the job that they need a marksman rifle to do perfectly well because all you want to do really is to just be sitting back taking some pot shots as your team is pushing up, providing that cover fire, potentially even cracking or creating an opening for your team to then exploit. Me personally, I've always really gravitated to towards the 3030, I think it's just a little bit more consistent for me and it's super satisfying to hit a fully charged up headshot. 
but a lot of other people go for the scout. It's their go to just whatever you find is more reliable and you're all faithful. That's what you should be using. But to pair it up, you want to use a shotgun. Now, it is a little bit weird to have two single fire weapons in your loadout, but for the support role, it really works because when you're up close and personal, you're not sticking in someone's face. You're playing line of sight. You're playing cover. You're poking out, hitting somebody, poking back behind cover. That is what you want to do as a support. And that's what a shotgun also wants to do. That's why I would recommend using either the master for the PK again, whichever one is more consistent for you. I gravitate towards the Mastiff, but I know a lot of other people go for the PK as well. But both these weapons just go hand in hand with the support role. And for shotguns, if you're playing somebody like Newcastle or Gibraltar, where you can play their shield or their bubble, the shotgun is just so good for those situations. Now, it will take you guys a little bit to get used to, because again, it is a little bit weird to have two single fire weapons in your weapon comp. But I promise you, once you actually start to get the positioning and the idea of a support down, they will feel so good in these roles. But let me know your favorite weapon comp in the comments down below. And if you guys want to stay up to date with the latest the greatest Apex Legends tips, tricks, and news. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Thanks all for watching. Once again, I made second game, and I'll see you guys in the next one.